tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today we're speaking with Justin Dunn. Cat Lady Justin is the proud owner of the Kitty Boss and is here to tell you everything you need to know about picking a cat, adoring your cat, so you form a bond and taking care of your pet for a lifetime of unconditional love. You are about to embark on a journey that will change your life forever and your cat's life too. Justin is dedicated to helping you find the practi- practically perfect pussy cat for you. Pamper your pet so you imprint on each other and protect your pet properly so it potentially lives to 30. I know you've probably never thought that owning a cat could be easy, but it really can be. The company provides the tools you need to pick out the practically perfect pussy cat for you and then pamper your pet so you imprint on each other. They also protect your pet properly for a lifetime of unconditional love. The Kitty Boss by Cat Lady Justin has gained popularity and a good reputation as the only mentor famous for supporting concerned cat lovers with a simple three-step method called Pick, Pamper, Protect. It helps. It helps cat owners and love, uh, lovers know easiest ways to own and take care of cats, whether it be for the first time owner or those with a busy schedule. This can help them feel confident, and good about getting a cat without worrying about making any wrong choice. Currently based in the UK, Cat Lady Justin is an American content creator who also has a podcast channel that discusses everything about cats, which can be streamed through all major podcast streaming platforms. Cat Lady Justin speaks six languages and has a huge following on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn. There's also an upcoming book entitled The Kitty Boss, because who's the boss really, you or Kitty? As well as a course called One Cat Away, which aims to help catalyze a million more cat relationships. Justin, welcome to the show. (laughs) Thank you, Stacey. I imagine that was a little bit of a mouthful. I used to be an actor. So for me, saying all that alliteration and all that PPPPP is really, you know, kind of easy. But uh, so sorry about that. But uh, hopefully it makes sense because it's really it's really important to me to help people adopt a cat who think they can't have one for whatever reason. So first, we're going to start off with my question that I ask all of our guests is how did you get to be so passionate about cats? So. That is probably not going to be the answer you expect. So uh, you you might think, oh, he had this experience or whatever. But I was born with cats. My family has always liked cats. My dad grew up with a cat and he told me stories of when he was studying for medical school. His dad's a doctor. He would have his cat would sit there and flip the pages for him of his textbook every time he'd look up. My mom grew up with cats as well. So it's like in the DNA, you know, I was an Egyptian in a last life or something like that because cats have just always been a part. There had never even been a consideration not to have cats. So there, were, there was a period of time where I didn't have a cat, uh, about 10 years where I, had, where I was catless. However, there was never a consideration that I would not have a cat, that I, uh, whether I was a child, an adult, whether I'm old. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's, it's just does. It's not in my universe to think living with no cat. So it's it's not something that I have a a uh, you know particularly harrowing or uh, tear jerking story about. It just simply it, it is what it is, and it's never been in the universe not to have a cat in my life. And even my dad, who doesn't own a cat right now, has three cats that he takes care of, which are neighborhood strays or whatever they are, but they don't look really sick or anything, but he takes care of them. So he's kind of the neighborhood cat caregiver. Yeah, It is just a thing. (laughs) Well, let me ask you a question because this is something that's interesting to me. I mean, I've grown up with cats. Cats were in my family's life before I even existed too. Were all the cats in your life, were they all spayed and neutered? Yes. So we've always done that. Uh, We've always spayed. Uh, We've always had females oddly enough so so none of them were ever neutered they were all spayed 
But yeah, that's a decision we always did. And when I had uh, the cats that I have now, who are nine and well, soon to be 10 and 12, but nine and 11 years old, when I got those two, I was originally the first one I was going to be, oh, should I really spay? Each time I'm like, well, because because they're so beautiful. They're so cute. Maybe they, maybe I could have some little baby Emily's or baby Charlotte's or whatever. Uh, and then the vet explained to me that actually the procedure reduces their chances of getting cancers. And that's what sold it to me. It wasn't so much the problem with ha- them having their monthly thing and then a little blood to clean up or or the howling that they do because they're females or they'll howl to try and attract a male and all that. Uh, it wasn't that. That was the big problem. The big decision factor was the reduction of their chances of getting cancer. I was like, okay, let's do it. And that's it, really. So yeah, we've always spayed our cats, and that's always been a decision we've made. It's also important to, you know, like Bob Barker used to say, help control the pet population. There are too many cats out there who don't have homes, whether they're homeless and on the street or whether they're in a shelter, you know, just waiting to be adopted by someone. There are way too many. And so uh, if we can do something to help do that, then it's probably a good thing, especially if it also enhances their lifespan by reducing their risk of cancer, I think that's a good decision to make. So before we dive into the details of the Kitty Boss, um, uh, why did you start this? Like what what was missing that you felt you needed to get involved with and create this new venture? Ah, Now here I do have a story. So what was happening to me was I was seeing far too many posters walking around, lost cat, this, that, and the other thing. So I was like, oh, that's no good. We need to hopefully help people protect their pets better. And then the other thing I saw, and this was the big one, was too many posts all over social media, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or wherever, about this poor cat at a shelter that needs adopting, or this poor cat that got abandoned, or this all these stories of these sad cats. And I wanted to adopt all of them. I mean, if I could, and if it was healthy, I'd have a hundred cats in each room because I just want all of them. However, that's not feasible. It's not possible. It's also not healthy to have, you know, a hundred cats in one room. So I, instead of feeling bad, because I did shed tears, I mean, they're cats, they're kitty cats. They're so cute. I mean, how could you not, you're not, you know, so I'm not made of stone. So I, so after shedding tears, I realized I need to do something about it. So The mission I kind of assigned myself is to help a million more cats get adopted around the world. And the flip side to that coin is to help all those closet cat people to find a lifetime of unconditional love. In other words, to get a companion animal and have that in their life finally. And so that's kind of the mission that we're on. And that's how it came about. And it's really that simple. So... Traditionally, I guess I would say, in general, more people have tended to have dogs than cats, and those numbers seem to be demographically changing as we have more apartments, we're in a more urban environment, maybe we're out of the house more. And I, I know we can uh, have a conversation around the fact that cats do need enrichment. You know, if you don't have a litter box and food and walk away 14 hours a day and think, you know, your cat's going to be happily fine in, in an apartment. But you're saying that there are more potential cat owners out there than we currently have in society. What what convinces you of that? It depends where you get your numbers from. So actually, as of 20, I think it was 2017, cats are the number one companion animal in the UK. In the United States, they have been the number one companion animal for longer than that. Uh, So the reason that it seems that dogs are more prevalent is because they're more out there. They're, they're, they're more visible. There's more products out there for dogs and services out there for dogs targeted and aimed at dogs, but they're not the biggest market actually. That's why I use the term. I say it kind of fun in a funny way, closet cat people. For some reason, not every cat person is just kind of out there and willing to say, here, my, my cat. It's getting more now. You see a lot more cat daddies. There's a movie now coming soon called the Cat Daddies movie, or it's now being released all around the country, and you can see special screenings of it. And it's it, it's charming. I think everyone should see it. In fact, uh, 
I'm going to be interviewing the producer on, on my show in, in a couple of weeks, but it's just, so there's more and more of it now, but traditionally over the last 20, 30 years, cat, cat people have been kind of closeted about their cat love. And so, uh, whereas dog people have not, they've been always out now, out and proud of their dogs. And so it's, uh, it seems that there's more dog stuff, but actually there's a lot more cat owners out there, both in the U S and the UK than there are dogs. And so it's a bigger market, but also there's a lot of people out there who want a cat, but think they can't have one. That happened even to my mom for a long period of time until she realized the error of her ways and now has a cat. And, and so they think it's too expensive. They think they don't have the time. They don't have the money. It's time and money, really. And so I've never had a problem with that with my cats because we don't foster or, show or We don't do any of that. We don't rescue cats. That is for the brilliant people out there who do that. And there are amazing people out there who do that, who can take a cat and turn its life around complete, take a sickly thing and make it thrive. And that's wonderful. That's not what we did because we have, uh, because my mom was a teacher. My dad was a doctor, very busy lives and careers. I also have, you know, a a way I make, I make money that isn't, that doesn't involve cats. Maybe that'll change soon. I hope. But uh, but for now, that's that's what it is. And so uh, I've always had we've always had to have a cat that wasn't going to be super time consuming and expensive. So not a behavioral disaster uh, and not a, uh, you know, financial disaster either. And so I put together a a way, in other words, I, I don't think I invented any of it, but I put together all the different little tips, tricks, tools, techniques and stuff uh, that make it so that it's the easy way to have a cat. Because while I do recommend that you feed your cats what I feed my cats, you know, which is raw, premium, safe food that that I get, like all, I mean, human grade meat. And all, I mean, you can go over the top and spend a fortune or you don't have to. Because at the end of the day, it's more important for a cat to have a loving home than to have gourmet food. So, I mean, sure, gourmet food will be even better and increase their health, longevity, and and their thriving. But ultimately, they're better off with a loving home, uh, even if they have to eat inferior quality food. So, rather than being in a sh- stuck in a shelter somewhere. So, so it's a it's a question of priorities. But ultimately, the idea is is that we need we need to get these cats adopted. Uh, I, I I can't stand the even the idea of a kill shelter, but I also can't really blame and condemn them when they have no idea what to do. They have no endless supply of money either or space or whatever. So they don't know what to do other than that. So I'm not blaming or condemning anybody, but the idea of a shelter that does that, it just drives me nuts. So we need to get people to adopt the cat. And there's a lot of people that need a cat. They don't realize they need a cat because they don't realize that they're suffering from some of the conditions that cats could resolve. I mean, cats have been scientifically proven to lower cortisol levels, to reduce your hyper, your, your, your hypertension. Uh, These, there's some universities that have little kitten rooms. They have puppy rooms too, but kitten rooms so that people, students, when they're stressed over exams can go and play with some kittens and lower their stress levels. Now, I don't know why they don't realize that they're causing the stress with the exams and do something about that instead, but they give them kittens and that's great. And so I think, it, there are people that could really use the companionship. There are people who could really solve their loneliness, their stress. There's so many health benefits to owning a cat. And in fact, I have a, a little uh, book I, re- I wrote called The Psychology of Pet Ownership. And it also talks about dogs too, because I can't neglect that. But, but it's cats is, is the big thing, because cats, while like dogs, they're great pets. Dogs don't have that same scientifically. The, what other animal do you know? that emits a vibration, a sound, the purr, that actually lowers the hormone cortisol, which is the stress hormone, in a human. I mean, there's, I'm not aware of one. A bee, no. I mean, a bee, the buzzing bee, it's cute, but it doesn't, it doesn't lower your cortisol. In fact, it raises mine because I'm scared of being stung. But, <laughs> uh, but, but uh, the purr, there's no other animal on this planet that I'm aware of that emits a sound that symbiotically heals a human. 
So I think there's some kind of magic symbiosis there. There's some kind of, whether it's magical or scientific, it doesn't matter. There's some kind of thing going on between humans and cats. And so I think it's, it's really important. And there's a lot of people that really need a cat uh, and they don't, they don't realize they do. And so if I can, I can marry up those two, I think that'll be a really great thing. I'd be really happy with myself. Cats of the Wild is the podcast for cat lovers who want to make a difference. Listen to inspiring and engaging stories of wild cat conservation and learning how you can help protect cats all over the world. Search for Cats of the Wild in your favorite podcast app now. Do you want to make things easier on yourself and the others in your organization? Our friends at Dubert have teamed up with the Dallas Pets Alive and Spay Neuter Network teams, and together they have created the Companion Case Management Module. It allows you to be more proactive with all your organization's needs, create cases for your clients and organize them by type. Whether it is a rehoming situation, a pet parent needing food or medical assistance, or simply spay and neuter inquiries, CCM can help you manage all of them right from the Dubert system. Plus a huge bonus, it allows you to connect with those clients right from the case so there is no need to open up new windows for emails or pull out your phone for text messages. Check it out and learn more at www.dubert.com to get started today. Ever wanted to quickly connect, collaborate, or problem solve with others in the animal welfare field who are, you know, real people? Look no further than Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum brings people of animal welfare together with the common goal to keep more people and pets together. We share ideas, expertise, offer each other support, resources, and more. Visit forum.maddiespetforum.org slash cats. Maddie's Pet Forum. Come for an answer. Stay for the community. So, Justin, I'm actually going to challenge you a little bit in our conversation today because some of the the things that you're talking about, um, when I ran the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society, we were one of the organizations that adopted out feline leukemia positive cats since 1996. I used to say we would take in the strange, odd, old and dysfunctional, and we would find the strange, Mm -hmm. odd, old and dysfunctional families to live with the cats and everybody would be happy together. You had talked about these three components um, to your process about how to find a good good match, you know, in, in a family, uh, you've got these three, what you call the three P's, right? And, yeah. and you're saying this is a way that will work for a cat that doesn't have extra considerations. Yeah. I think applying some of these could apply to any cat out there and, and any family, because families have challenges, mm-hmm. families have toddlers, families have other pets, <laughs> families, you know, I, I adopted, I had many semi-feral cats in my household with mm-hmm. toddlers and people like, oh, how can you have a semi-feral cat in your house with toddlers? My semi-feral cats loved my kids more than mm-hmm. me because I would be the one who would be the one chasing them around for like a medication if they needed that. Or, you know, I was looked yep. at as like the serious one. The kids had no agenda, you know? I mean, yeah. And so they were, there's play. A lot of semi-feral cats have play in them and kids play. So, you know, a toddler's going to drag a string behind the, you know, behind mm-hmm. themselves or a toy, you know, or something like that. And the kid, the cat's going to pounce on that toy and play with them. So tell us what these three P's are. And I'm going to just throw out there as people are listening and thinking, you know, how could this apply for all yeah. cats? Yeah. And I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure it applies to all cats. It's just a question of I, I'm, my mission is to really get a million more cats adopted. So I need a million, you know, uh, more. Uh, so right. if you already have six cats, you know, you probably not going to want to get a seventh cat. Yep. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I know somebody with 19 cats. So, uh, so, <laughs> so maybe, right. but, uh, but it's just uh, a question of, I, I, that's the mission I'm on, but you're right. I think they could apply to lots of things. So when it comes to these three P's, it's like a mnemonic device, really. I'm trying to help people remember what to do when they go to, to the place or whatever they're going to go adopting. So, and they're really easy things. And in the Kitty Boss book, there's a lot more detail. So today I'm only going to go with uh, maybe one little teaching, one little takeaway uh, of these points, but realize that that's not the only thing. I can't write a book off of two sentences. So so the Kitty Boss book has more details in it, but what I'm going to teach today is just one little snippet. So pick is you know how to pick the practically perfect pussycat for you. 
And that is a very simple thing. And it's something that most of us already know, but people who don't already have a cat, you know, the people I'm looking at, you know, who, who think, mm, I want to adopt my first cat. Uh, they might not know this. And that is that you let the cat pick you. And so there are lots of signal. How do you know? How do you know if the cat, you know, that's why you got to read the book. Cause I, I go over every single signal that the cat might give you uh, to tell you I'm choosing you, but a few of them, is if the cat, you know, is looking at you directly. Like my dad adopted a cat named Willie and from 20 feet away in the back of the jail cell, <laughs> the cat, this Willie uh, howls at my dad, like a mating call, uh, and then stares at him fixedly. Obviously, Willie chose my dad. Willie was an older cat. They only had each other for, for less than 10 years because Willie was an older cat, fully grown, big Maine Coon. And uh, and my dad looked at him and he and he asked the lady at the shelter, what's that? <laughs> he didn't know what that thing was in the back because you know, with his glasses, he couldn't even see it. Like, oh, that's an old cow. He said, no, that's the one I want. And so and so my dad would have never even seen Willie if Willie hadn't announced himself and commanded my dad. So so, of course, you know, if it's meowing at you, if it licks you. Uh, these are all little signals that the cat has chosen you. If the cat's not giving you the time of day, if it's just like completely ignoring you, it's probably the wrong cat to choose. Can you win it over? Can you change its behavior? Of course you can. Of course you can. And I know people have adopted antisocial cats. And then that cat has become over the course of three, six months, the most sociable, lovely thing, loving thing ever. Yes. However, remember, I'm trying to show people the easy way someone who doesn't have the time to devote six months to a behavior modification program for the cat who just wants that easy win. You let the cat choose you. So if it's ignoring you and not giving you the time of day, it's probably going to hide under the bed and not, not, not greet your guests. But if you, <laughs> if it licks you, if it's uh, meowing at you, if it looks at you, then it's one of the signals and we go over all the rest of them in the book. So that's the first thing to remember is let it pick, let the cat pick you. So don't go in there thinking, I have to have an orange tabby, a main. You go in with this thing in mind, this fixed idea. It's going to make it a lot harder to find a cat. So because you're going to have to wait till you get the one that picks you if you want the easy way. So that's the first one. Right. Number two is how to pamper your pets. You imprint on each other. Now, those are all the different things that you can do to take care of your cat. But here's the principle that I want everyone to get. And this will help people who even already have 10 cats, uh, although they probably already know this intuitively, they may have never thought about this. Your action of doing the caring for the cat, whether that's changing the litter or feeding it or brushing it or playing with it or whatever, your action of doing that makes you fall in love with it over and over and over again. Your neglect makes you fall out of love with it. Now, somebody once asked me, isn't that true of relationships too? And I said, I don't know. I'm not a relationships expert. I'm a cat expert. However, I have read that that's true of relationships, that if you don't create your relationship again and again every day, it eventually goes away. So that's the principle that people need to remember is that you're not just brushing the cat or playing with it or whatever so that it, it's thankful and falls in love with you. You're doing it so that you fall in love with it and you sort of renew your vows to kitty cat every single time you do it. And so that's the principle of uh, the, the second principle, because it's really important. Like you said earlier at the beginning of the show, uh, a cat is not the kind of creature you can, it's not a goldfish. You can't buy it, stick it in the corner, change the litter once a day, drop some food in a bowl and you're done. You got to play with it a little bit. I mean, sure, you could get away with that. I mean, I mean, you could get away with it, but the cat's not going to be happy. And I don't see the point in, in, in owning a cat if you're going to ignore it. I mean, what's the point without the cuddles, the purr and all the stuff? So you're going to have to play with it a little bit uh, and show it some love. But that love is not just going to come back to you. It's going to make you fall in love again and again and enhance your health and vitality and effusiveness. So that's number two. And the three is how to protect your pet properly for that lifetime of unconditional love. So, of course, the oldest cat in recorded history, I think was 31 or 32 or something like that. And then the second one was his son who lived one year less. And, uh, and so that's why I say potentially lived to 30 because they, they do have it in them. It's just, what can we do? So of course I have a ton of recommendations in my book and you have to follow none of them. 
because of course I say you don't have to feed the cat what I feed my cat, but if you want it to live to 30, you can't you can't feed it the cheap dollar store cat food. However, that's better than being in a shelter and not adopting a cat. So I don't want people to think, oh my God, I can't afford, you know, $40 a week in cat food. So I'm not getting a cat. No, no it's okay. So uh, how to protect your pet pro- properly, it will include things and considerations like should I microchip it? Should it have a collar? Should uh, what about insurance? All these indoor versus outdoor. Like a lot of people think cats have to be outdoors. They have to, you know, especially a big, big prevalent misconception in England. They have to. No, they don't. Cats can be perfectly happy their whole lives as indoor house cats. Dr. Rachel Geller, famous cat behaviorist. Her cats are indoor house cats, and they they're perfect, obviously. You know, as long as you know what you're doing and you pamper your pet, you know, and you play with it and you do the, the things that you need to do that don't take hours and hours a day, uh, you, it can live forever. So, again, indoor versus outdoor, microchipping, oh, vaccinations. Does your, do your cats need vaccinate? For example, here in England, uh, it's an island. There's no rabies on this island of the British Isles, so they don't vaccinate for rabies in this country. I, I was surprised when I learned that, you know, 10 years ago. It's like, Really? Uh, so there, these are issues that, of course, I go into details in in the book because there's a, there's a lot of people out there who are actually against vaccinating pets. They have these other things they like. They call them no sods. And so. so I talk about that a little bit. You know, I my cats are vaccinated. You know, but I'm not going to impose that on everyone. I think it's a better choice. But I present to you the options for what you can choose. So for this one, the thing to remember is that you want to do the best that you can. Uh, the best within your means. So if you have the means to do something, you should do it. But the bare minimum is, you know, the cat needs to be protected. Uh, Indoors is a good thing, not a bad thing. And everything else, uh, litter box, you know, can your cat go outside? Sure, it can. Litter box is good. What kind of litter to choose? Uh, there There are different options. So I go into all those details again in the, in the book. And, you know, if we had a three hour show, I could just go into everything on the show. But those are sort of the three big things um, that I, I like to keep in mind. And I like people to keep in mind. And uh, that way, when they're a new cat owner and they go to pick their cat, they have an easy way to remember what they need and an easy way to remember when they go to the pet store, what they need to to bring home. And that's not to spend a fortune, but it is to have the minimums that they need so that they can have that lifetime of unconditional love with their companion animal. So Justin, tell us a little bit about your podcast. What are the kinds of guests that you have? How long have you had it and where do people find it? Yeah. So the Kitty Boss podcast is not like community cats. It hasn't been around for so long. It's relatively new in the last year or two. I don't remember exactly when I started it. And I have a lot of episodes on there where it's just, you know, five, 10 minutes of me going into details on a specific cat subject because because uh, the podcast is not like the Kitty Boss book. It's not all about, uh, you know, uh, the simplified. It's about everything. So so then I go into details on the teeth and brushing the teeth and all that and, um, and what kind of brush and all that. Anyway, I, I have on every topic imaginable, even PKU. I, I did a three episodes on PKU, which is uh, a feline disease. Uh, but yeah, and so, but then I also prefer the episodes like this one of your of community cats, where I have a guest on, because that's a lot more interesting than me just going off on a topic. And so the kind of guests I have are anyone that is uh, cat related business. So for example, we recently had uh, an inventor on who invented a what I call, and I think she's she's taking this one. I call it the pooper scooper for cats. She invented this little contraption that makes litter box management a heck of a lot easier. And I I love this thing. I, I thought it was brilliant, um, a brilliant invention. And so she came on to talk about uh, the cat savant. Her name is. Uh, she she came on and talked about her invention. I do a monthly catch up with Dr. Rachel Geller, the famous cat behaviorist. But I've also had other cat behaviorists uh, like our friends from the Cat Behavior Alliance on the show. Uh, As I mentioned, in a couple of weeks, we have the producer of the Cat Daddy's movie coming on the show. You will be coming on the show to talk about community cats and everything you've been doing 
for decades longer than I have been. So the Kitty Boss podcast, it's it, it's distributed everywhere that podcasts are. So Apple, Google, Spotify, you name it, it's all it's all over there. And uh, I I'd love for more people to subscribe, listen, you know, feedback and all that for that for my podcast, and that that would be awesome. But uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I do with that one. And uh, I just like to have fun with uh, with meeting, kind of like you, with meeting people in a cat-related thing and introducing them to my world. And the, the best way for folks to find out about your other programs is just to go to your website? I think so, yeah. Because for now, what I at the kittyboss.com, you can see a landing page on there where, uh, again, it's mostly aimed at new cat owners. So you subscribe there and you can get the 10 essentials for cat ownership. So before you buy a cat, here are the 10 essential things, things you and I will already know. But anyone can go there. Uh, and I want everybody to remember, this is all new. It's just me. So if you sign up, it's all manual. There's not a staff team automating. It's not a bunch of bots. So if you put your email in there, it's not going to some spammy system. It's just me. I'll see it. I won't turn your inbox into my litter box. Uh, I'll only send you the PDF of the Cat Essentials. Again, probably our listeners here today won't need that one, but maybe they'll be interested in something in there. I did want to read one last thing because uh, I sent this to uh, a somebody I know in the professional world. She's a very famous uh, food industry consultant uh, and because I work in business consulting and all that. And she, But she's also a cat lover uh, and, and an author and a speaker. So I sent her the kitty boss so she could read it. And this is what she said to me. And this is someone, remember, who's had cats for decades. The kitty boss is a revelation to me. I have had cats all my life and thought I knew pretty much everything there was to know. But this book is a mine of useful information that will change your life with your cat. Just for starters, who knew there is the right cat for you and, of course, the wrong cat? Brilliant book, easy to read, fascinating anecdotes. Go buy it. That's what Karen Green says. Uh, and I, I'm grateful, of course, for her review of the book. Um, but the book is not for sale yet. But when you sign up uh, for my little email list, again, I'll let you know as soon as I put it out there uh, to sell and uh, and finalize all of that. And uh, only positive and pertinent information will be dropped into your inbox once in a while. So it's not a daily email list. It's not a monthly newsletter. It's a, as and when there's an announcement or something positive and pertinent to tell you uh, in relation to cats and the kitty boss and all of that. So it's a safe, you know, it's a safe thing. And it's uh, at the moment done manually. So there's no there's no automation either, so nothing to worry about there. So I would really appreciate listeners uh, to sign up for that because if we can share the love, let's. Rem- the other thing I don't, want, I guess the last thing I want everyone to remember for today is that you and I and most people listening to the kid, uh, the community cats are probably already cat love owners. We probably have cats already. Maybe I'm wrong. So the last thought I want to leave people with today is that you and I and most of the Community Cats podcast listeners, we probably already have cats, right? And so that's great. Maybe some don't, and that's fine. And so, uh, but we know people and we have connections, we have followers, we have contacts. I know I have people who follow me who love cats, but they don't have a cat. And so I'm on a mission to convince them uh, and show them the easy way to have a cat and, and to get one, get a cat. Um, nobody I know has gotten a cat and then regretted it. I never know anybody like that. As long as they get the right cat, remember the practically perfect pussy mm-hmm. cat for you, the easy way. Cause, uh, so you know, people, so even if you sign up and you already have 10 cats, great. You can still share it because you care, you care about cats. I always like to tell people I love people, but I love cats even more. And I'm sure a lot of us feel the same way. And so help me help Not you, but help me help more cats because I know Tom Cruise is really hot right now. So I'm going to borrow his line, but that's it. I wanted to leave people with that little thought because it would be wonderful to connect with more people and share more love and just let me know. And then, of course, it's Cat Lady Justin on social media, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Just look for that or search for the kitty boss. I'm sure you'll find me. You'll see my face, my Emily on my shoulder and just uh, let us know and interact with us because We just, uh, we love people. And as you can tell, we can talk a lot. (laughs) We're chatty catty. (laughs) Justin, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the Community Cats podcast. And I look forward to having you on the show in the future. Awesome. Thank you, Stacey. 
That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think, and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats.